So here is this question that I'm asking about some old ideas that we've been looking at in the course for quite a while. And hopefully you can see that system one is closed. There's no state change outside of the system. The only interactions are the low friction of the floor and the interaction between the spring and the wall, which causes no change to the wall. And system two is neither isolated nor closed because in this case the cart changes its momentum clearly and also there's a state change outside the system the spring expanding and three is both isolated and closed the only significant force is a force between the carts and that is an interaction pair and so it adds up to zero and there are no external state changes I want to talk about use of language for a moment because it's useful. In this case, with the rope exerting a force on the cart and causing the cart's energy to change, we say that the force exerted by the rope on the cart does work on the cart. Or alternatively, we might say that the rope does work on the cart. Similarly, in the case of the brick compressing the spring, there's a change in the spring's energy. That's what we call the work. And that is the work done by the brick on the spring, or done by the force exerted by the brick on the spring. Notice, though, that the physics use of the word work, or doing work, is different from the everyday meaning. You're sitting at your computer right now watching these video lectures and doing the lesson, and I'm sure you feel that you are doing work. And in an everyday sense, you certainly are. But from the physics definition of work, you most certainly are not. You are not exerting forces on objects and causing their energies to change. And so, you're not doing any work right now. It's very important to recognize the difference between how external and internal forces affect the energy of a system. So, in this case, with the brick compressing the spring, that force exerted by the brick on the spring is an external force. And it does work on the system, and as a result, the system's energy increases. But now let's think about what would happen instead if we had included the earth and the brick in our system. Now that force that the brick exerts on the spring is an internal force. And the effect it has is to convert gravitational potential energy in the system into spring potential energy also in the system. So it hasn't changed the system energy, it's simply rearranged energy within the system. And it has both converted energy inside the system from one form into another, and you could also think of it as having transferred energy that was gravitational potential energy, in some sense belonging to the brick in the earth, and it's transferred it into spring potential energy that in some sense belongs to the spring. But no work has been done because the system energy hasn't changed. I'll just say, that's not how everybody defines work. People will often talk about work by external forces causing the system's energy to change, as opposed to work done by internal forces causing rearrangements of energy within the system. That's actually the way I prefer to define work. However, this definition of work as the change of system energy resulting from the action of external forces is more in line with how you'll use the term in future thermodynamics courses that you'll take, and so that's why I'm choosing to use that definition. We already know that external forces don't always change a system's energy, so let's look at when forces do work or change a system's energy. So let's first think about a person pushing on a wall. Presumably this person isn't a superhero, and so the wall doesn't accelerate, and so its kinetic energy doesn't change. And also there's no state change in the wall, and so there's no change in internal energy either. And so no work is being done. The system's energy isn't changing. Why is this? Well, one thing to notice is that there's a point of application of the force where the person's hand is touching the wall. And notice that the point of application of the force didn't move during this process. 
Now contrast that with a person pushing on a cart, and the system is just the cart. The cart accelerates because of the force that the person exerts on it, and so its kinetic energy changes. The person is doing work on the cart. Notice that the point of application of the force this time has moved. We could define a displacement vector for the point of application of the force. And this is a rule for us now, that for a force to do work, its point of application must move. If the point of application of the force doesn't move, then it's impossible for any work to have been done by the force. The displacement of the point of application of the force is important to us in determining work, and so we're going to give it a name. We'll call it the force displacement, and we'll use delta R sub F to mean force displacement. Notice that in the case of the person pushing the cart, the force displacement was a non-zero vector, but in the case of the person pushing on the wall, the force displacement was zero, and that's why no work was done. We could contrast that again with pushing on a mattress. Now the mattress compresses, and although the mattress really hasn't moved, the point of application of the force has, and so there's a non-zero force displacement, and work is done. As a result, the mattress undergoes a change of state. I want to bring back an old familiar example to show you that this gives us a new way of understanding something that we've already understood in another way. So here's a cart being launched using a spring, and the system is the cart spring and wall, but not the floor. And we've already discussed earlier on in the course that this system is closed, but not isolated. It's clear that it's not isolated because the momentum of the situation changes. It's closed because there's no external state change, but it may have bugged you thinking about this, and I hope it has. Now we have an easier way of thinking about it. It's not isolated because the floor exerts a force on the wall. However, the point of application of that force does not move, and so our force displacement is zero, and that force does no work on the, on the system, and that's why the system is closed. Impulse is a vector, and so it can't be positive or negative, but work is a scalar, and it is allowed to be positive or negative. So let's think about the person pushing the cart again. The system is gaining energy, and so the change of energy is positive, and that change of energy due to the application of an external force is the work, and so the work is positive. On the other hand, the person could be pulling back on the cart to slow it down and bring it to rest. Now the system's energy is decreasing, the change in energy is negative, and so the work is negative. Look at how the vectors are pointing. In the first case, where the work was positive, the force that the person exerts in the, on the cart and the force displacement point in the same direction. On the other hand, in the second case, that force and the force displacement are pointing in opposite directions and the work is negative. And this is a general rule. When the force exerted on the system and the force displacement point in the same direction, then the work is positive. But if those two vectors point in opposite directions, then the work is negative. So let's check that you know how to determine whether uh, work is positive or negative. So here we have a mass sitting on a spring and a person pulls up on the mass so that the spring becomes less compressed. Let's let our system be just the spring, and let me remind you that there is a force that the spring exerts up on the mass, and its interaction pair partner is a force that acts down due to the mass on the spring. And we're interested in that one, the contact force that the mass exerts on the spring. Does it do positive or negative work on the spring?